New details about the man who was struck and killed by lightning on Siesta Key. Plus, Manatee County Schools still pushing to hire school guardians. How the district plans to hire and train them before the school year starts. And new developments in an investigation into vandalized sea turtle nest on Siesta Key. Your Suncoast News starts now. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. And I'm Jacqueline Matter. Thanks for joining us. Tonight we're learning more about 33-year-old James Barton, the man who was hit and killed by lightning on Siesta Key yesterday. It happened just after 2 p.m. near Midnight Pass Road. This is on the beach just behind the Pepper Tree Bay condominiums. ABC 7's Taylor Torgano is near there now with more. Taylor? because as you can see another one of those storms has rolled in and this is the safest place for me to be. It looked like this on Siesta Key yesterday when the victim was packing up his stuff and that lightning struck but it was too late and today his mom tells us she's heartbroken. You don't expect your your kids to die before you. Through tears as she picked up James Barton's deserted car from Siesta Key Beach, Talena Goad says the reality of her son's death wouldn't quite hit her until she sees him. Just to be able to hold him and tell him bye, I love him. I know he's not there. I know God handpicked him. Her faith, the only thing getting her through what she calls a freak accident. He loved the Lord. He loved doing stuff for people. He was a hard worker. He worked six and seven days a week and he always had a smile on his face. A plumber and a good man, simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. The eyewitness said that he's seen, I guess, where it hit his keys that was hanging on his uh, belt loop. And it come up, went back through his head and down through his chin. Instantaneous, loud, and powerful. It was, it was massive. Anatalia Ashcroft was... says she was in her condo making a snack when the giant bolt of lightning hit the gotcha. beach just outside her window. When you have lightning that's that close, normally you hear, you see the flash and then a few seconds later you can hear the crackle. This was flash and instantaneous sharp crack. So much so that like you could almost feel it. The experts say it can happen almost anywhere, and Mother Nature is not a force to be reckoned with, a warning Ashcroft experienced firsthand. Lightning is uncontrolled electricity. It will go wherever it wants. It will do whatever it wants. And if you're in the way, you're going to get hit. And Goad is feeling the effects of. He's up there probably shaking his head saying, Mom, I'm all right. I'm here. A simple concept that is proven true, and there are numerous other safety tips that you can follow to prevent this from happening to you. We'll toss it back over to Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan, who has more. Bob? Yeah, dangerous situation out there. I have to go back to 1991 when we had... Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Here we go. Now when we had a uh, lightning strike killed two people in 1991, they were walking on Siesta Key Beach. In fact, one was walking closer to the water. The other two were walking the opposite direction, hit right between them. The two in the middle there died as a result of the lightning strike. Uh, this shot was at 145, about a half hour uh, prior to the uh, shot that you see here. This was a half hour prior to the lightning strike, and these storms were moving to the north. And again, Daniel Matusek getting this. This is not when you're supposed to be on the beach. You can see the people there right Right near the water and also off in the distance there are quite a few people still on the beach and a bolt from the blue can occur again uh, where it's not raining that bolt can actually go outside of the rain area and strike some 12 miles away uh, lightning is attracted to tall objects obviously so you would never want to be under a tree the best place is to be away from windows indoors and again wait to about 30 minutes after the last thunder before you resume your outdoor activities again if you're uh, in a car or near a car like we saw with Taylor right there that's a good place to be during a lightning storm because it's not the tires that save you, it's the lightning hits the car, goes along the metal frame, which is a good conductor of electricity, and then down through the tires, blowing the tires out and into the ground. So uh, uh, cars do provide some protection there. Stay away from metal objects. You heard about the keys he was holding, and it appeared to uh, go through the keys. You do not want to have any metal on you at all when there's a lightning storm around, and you are trapped outdoors. It can side flash to uh, those metal objects. So we've seen people with uh, rings and bracelets on where it actually has hit uh, those objects. And again, if you're
you're in the pool and you hear the thunder roar, go indoors. You don't have to see the lightning, but again, as I said, there's always that first bolt, and these storms this time of year can generate lightning in about 20 minutes. So as they reach about 30,000 feet, those storms tend to uh, generate lightning. And we're seeing quite a bit of that right now in northwest Bradenton near Palmasola, also heading toward Parrish right now. Some very heavy lightning and heavy rainfall up in Manatee County. More on our weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, Bob, thank you. Charlotte County Sheriff's detectives trying to sort out a weekend shooting that left four people hurt. It happened at a private party around 2.30 a.m. at Harbor Heights Civic Association along Harbor Drive. Deputies found four people with gunshot wounds. The sheriff's office says all four are expected to recover from their injuries. New details into our newsroom today about a shooting in Gulf Cove in Charlotte County. A third suspect has been arrested for involvement in a shooting there earlier this month. This Friday, Daniel Bouchard was charged with trying to sell fake substances as real drugs. According to police and statements from two others who were arrested, he tried to sell them a white powdery substance as cocaine, and that led to an argument where guns were involved. Manatee County's Public Safety Department working with Apple to help pinpoint your location faster when you call 911. It works using a new technology called Rapid SOS that's connected to all iPhones with the latest iOS software update. According to the company that developed it, Many 911 communication centers have outdated infrastructures that can delay information or even give dispatchers inaccurate or unreliable locations. This new technology is free for any public safety department. In just seven weeks, Manatee County students will head back to class and still school guardians have not been hired to protect the elementary school students. According to the district, there were 250 applicants for the guardian positions. The district and sheriff's office have narrowed that pool down to 100. Drug tests, background checks and psychological testing has started for approximately 20 of those finalists. Although the district only intends to hire 35 guardians, Deputy Superintendent Ron Serrana expects some qualify or some candidates will not qualify. The guardian program is uh, very well attended with quality applicants. We have a lot that have law enforcement background, a lot that have been retired, uh, but some are also nearing their retirement, and so they're looking at maybe retiring early. Guardian training is expected to start in mid-July. The goal is to have all guardians hired and trained by the end of September. Serrana says SROs will fill in any holes that the district has. Venice residents have been asking for a hurricane shelter since last year's Hurricane Irma. The city does not have a county-approved shelter, but that could change with the addition of a new Sarasota Memorial Hospital on Laurel Road. Uh, the preliminary hospital site plan currently shows a hospital, ER, parking garage, and a hurricane shelter. Before it can happen, though, it needs approval and funding from the city of Venice and Sarasota County. Wildlife officials are looking for the person who vandalized multiple sea turtle nests on Siesta Key. We're now being told that the number of sea turtle nests found damaged is actually higher than originally reported. It appears someone drove an ATV or a golf cart through eight nests, which were behind some condos off of Sanderling Road. Someone noticed the nests on Friday and then reported it to Florida Fish and Wildlife. FWC officials think the crime was committed sometime on Thursday night. Sea turtles, nests, and hatchlings are federally protected. If those responsible are found, they could face jail time. More than 500,000 Floridians are affected by Alzheimer's disease. June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, which brings attention to the many services available to those dealing with the disease. The Alzheimer's Association is an information and referral intake organization. They can help provide you with the steps necessary to take. Some signs people may have if they have dementia are forgetfulness or maybe a change in personality. They say if you see these signs, it's very important to get help as soon as possible. We're an aging population, and the more we age, uh, we are seeing higher numbers. So those numbers every year are increasing. Although there is no cure for dementia or Alzheimer's, some rehab centers, the, the area uses therapies that keep people active and close to their normal routine. It could be anything from gardening, listening to music, or even cooking. As the 4th of July holiday approaches, law enforcement will be out looking for impaired drivers both on and off land. This upcoming weekend marks the beginning of Operation Dry Water Weekend nationwide, a campaign by law enforcement to prevent drunk boating. Boaters will notice an increase in the numbers of officers on the water from Friday through Sunday. 
Driving a boat with a blood alcohol level of 0.08% is illegal in Florida. That's about the blood alcohol content of one beer, a glass of wine, or one shot of liquor. So keep that in mind. Yep, still to come in your Suncoast news. You're paying less for gas these days, but not for long. I'll tell you where you can get the cheapest gas. Plus, with the help of the community, they've narrowed down the concept for Sarasota's Bayfront to one final plan. We'll show you what it could look like in the future. I'm Anne. I'm a scientist. Recycling takes a team. Why don't you let me and me help you out? Everyone plays a part. Don't trash. I love taking stuff apart and building new things out of it. What could be treasure? Pal's my most advanced android. <gasps> this is awesome. You haven't seen anything yet. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do-it-yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Sparky. Get to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota for big savings during the Chrysler Pacifica Incredible Sales Event. Get KBB's 2017 Best Buy Award overall winner, the Chrysler Pacifica, for just $23,999. Or save big and get the new Chrysler 300 Touring with an MSRP over $30,000 for just $21,999. That's a savings of over $8,000. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Fiat in Sarasota today. If you don't want to fall immediately into love, look away. If you don't want to awaken a desire for excellence, look away. If you don't want to be seduced, please look away. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Maserati Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP is the largest locally owned CPAP supply company in the area. Is it time to replace your old equipment? The staff at Sarasota Oxygen and CPAP can show you the most up-to-date CPAP equipment and supplies to meet your sleep apnea needs, including portable travel devices and the SoClean automatic CPAP sanitizer. We serve all of Southwest Florida, giving the highest quality of care with the finest CPAP equipment. Please visit our website, sarasotacpap.com. According to a new survey by U.S. News & World Report, three of Alabama's top four hotels and resorts are part of the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail Resort Collection. The Grand Hotel Marriott Resort in Point Clear, the Battle House Renaissance Mobile Hotel & Spa, and the Renaissance Birmingham Ross Bridge Golf Resort & Spa. Hey, we didn't invent Southern hospitality, we just offer more of it. Visit rtjgolf.com resorts to find out more. you may not realize it, but gas prices are going down. According to AAA, Florida gas prices went down for the 30th straight day yesterday. That's 20 cents total since Memorial Day. The average cost for a gallon of gas in Florida, now about $2.70. The prices are still 50 cents per gallon higher than a year ago, and gas will be at its highest price in three years for Independence Day. It's about 20, per, 20 cents per gallon lower than it was for Memorial Day weekend may see a slight uptick over the next week or so, and then we can expect a, more of a long-term decline in gasoline prices. Florida's most expensive gas is in Miami and West Palm Beach, the cheapest in the state, the Tampa Bay area, and Orlando, with an average cost of $2.60. Well, we're just weeks away from a major construction project in Venice. We're now learning new details about that project's timeline and when you can expect delays. Take a look at the updated plan. In an effort to help downtown businesses, the project will now start work on eastbound lanes of Venice Avenue first. Those lanes will be closed from July through October. Then construction will move to westbound lanes, tentatively closing lanes from October through November. 
That entire project is expected to be finished by the spring of 2019. Manatee County government looking to fill some open seats. There are three openings for the Tourist Development Council, which is a citizens advisory committee that makes recommendations to the county commission on how tourist tax revenue should be spent. The county's looking for one member who is a general manager of a hotel, a motel or other tourist accommodation in the county, and another two seats available for applicants who are involved in some way in the area's tourist industry. The Bay Sarasota designers have come up now with a final master plan to develop the bayfront near the Van Wezel. There were many plans that were discussed with the public and the city over the last couple of months. ABC 7's Rick Adams joins us live from Sarasota City Hall, where a workshop with commissioners discussing the Bay project is going on right now. What's happening there, Rick? Yeah, guys, the workshop got underway here about an hour ago. There has been a lot of progress. The Bay's master plan does include an outdoor event, lawn and theater, possibly a floating stage and a ferry and water taxi. The plan also includes keeping the Van Wezel. Right now, the Van Wezel Foundation is meeting with the City Commission to talk all about the need for a new performing arts center. So as part of our master plan, we had to demonstrate to um, the community that we have a phasing strategy in mind. And so this project will be built over many decades probably, but we want to see something happen right away. So we're recommending a phase one of a capital project and we have the boundaries of it and the capital costs and we really just want to start moving on it as fast as possible. But we still need uh, commission's approval. And the Bay will be looking for that approval on September 6th. By the way, there is a public meeting on this tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 at the Municipal Auditorium. Reporting live from downtown Sarasota, I'm Rick Adams. Back to you. All right, Rick, thank you so much. Looks like the rain has uh, stopped there. It was raining a little harder here in yeah, downtown Sarasota. Yeah, it's starting to come to an end here in Sarasota. Still continuing, though, to be pretty strong in Anna Maria Island, also up near northwest Bradenton and Parrish, uh, getting hit the hardest right now. Let's go to the maps to show you what's happened. This is the lightning death total from 2017. You can see Florida uh, was the top state in terms of deaths, and that's a direct result, again, of us being the lightning capital of North America. And that continues to be the area from just north of Tampa all the way to uh, Lakeland and then southward down into Fort Myers. And you can see uh, uh, under a tree in the Baker County, one lightning death there. This is a mother walking uh, in Fort Myers and two people walking on the beach there. Again, Satellite Beach and Jensen Beach, construction worker in Pembroke Pines as well. We've had two deaths now in the state of Florida for 2018. And one of those was a, a farm worker and also the one out on Siesta Key. Uh, this is Anna Maria webcam showing you uh, the low tide. You can see that boat just kind of going down there sunshine plenty of it but now uh, clouds and showers are moving into Anna Maria Island and some lightning being uh, detected you see the sea state starting to be disrupted by the strong winds associated with those uh, cells and also quite a bit of rain falling there now we have the southeasterly wind flow it's rather light and is meeting up with the sea breeze right here along the west coast of Florida that's our normal pattern it's going to change on uh, Wednesday and Thursday Tuesday we'll see similar conditions like we're seeing today uh, but by Wednesday and Thursday it'll be inland storms again pushing toward the east coast right now the heaviest action activity has shifted up into Manatee County. Northport had some big storms there earlier. Venice, just the parts of Venice and north thereof in Osprey and Tacomas, Palmer Ranch, and then stretching out towards Siesta Key and Lido. Still some lightning strikes around, even though the rain's coming to an end here in Lakewood Ranch. There's still a chance of getting hit by lightning. Majority of the people who are hit by lightning, it's after the rain has come to an end, thinking they can go back out and resume their activities. You should wait 30 minutes after the last uh, rumble of thunder and then pres uh, resume your outdoor activities. And also quite a bit of lightning, as I mentioned, near Holmes Beach. Uh, 78 strikes just within the last 10 minutes uh, from Parrish all the way over uh, to Anna Maria Island. And this is the strike zone in the next five minutes. The heaviest activity will be right here uh, near Northwest Braden, Palmasola, stretching out toward Anna Maria Island. And down to street level we go. Uh, you can see this is State Road 64 near Palmasola and then stretching out toward Holmes Beach. We've had quite a bit of heavy rainfall there. It's all going to be coming to an end here fairly quickly, though. It's moving to the northwest, and once it moves on through, uh, we'll see uh, some clearing of skies and not much of a chance for rain to redevelop overnight. We will see, though, again, a chance for some showers and storms developing tomorrow afternoon. About a half inch of rain there in Northport. The forecast of forest tomorrow calling for scattered showers and storms. There could be a few out in the coast, out in the Gulf of Mexico to start things off, but mainly afternoon and evening storms are expected. Future cast showing those storms winding down, and then tomorrow they'll be back, though, 
After some sunshine in the uh, day, will really heat up and then those storms will work their way toward the west coast. Uh, not as much of a chance for rain tomorrow as we saw today and then more inland storms on Wednesday and Thursday. Right now it's still raining at the airport. It's cooled things down though. That's one of the nice benefits of these afternoon storms. 76 degrees after a high today uh, warmed up to 91 degrees. That was the high today. On the low is 73. Those numbers fairly close to seasonal averages for boaters tomorrow. Winds out of the southeast turning around to the southwest as the sea breeze develops. Seas running one to two feet with a light chop on the bays and inland waters. Rain chances dropping a little bit over the next several days to 30 percent. And these will be mainly inland storms with a few coastal showers in the morning as that sea breeze starts to move toward the east. And then better chances of rain come Sunday and Monday or sun, Saturday, Sunday and Monday as a result of some tropical moisture moving on in. Back to you. Okay, Bob, thank you. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll show you how a gator near Tampa found its way into the back of a cop car. This week, from crisis to confusion, more than a thousand immigrant children still waiting to be reunited with their families. President Trump standing his ground. Will Congress find a solution? World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast. Get more for your money at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Subaru vehicles hold their value better than any other brand for 2018, according to ALG. And Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's most trusted brand for four years running. The Subaru Forester is an IIHS top safety pick for 12 years running. And right now, you can lease a new Subaru Forester for just $2.29 a month or get 0% financing with zero down. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Many websites selling medication may look professional and legitimate, but the vast majority of sites selling prescription drugs are doing so illegally. Criminals use websites to sell counterfeit medications that may contain life-threatening toxins. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. Mark Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked, especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. That is a pretty good breakfast you're not even eating. Not ever. No? Why not? What's up? Kath and I knew that Jenny had been partying a bit. Found out she tried heroin. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. The body, it is a work of art and a powerful ally in the fight against cancer. A new approach called immunotherapy works by helping our immune system correctly identify and eradicate many types of cancer cells. Speak with your doctor and visit su2c.org slash immunotherapy to learn more. Your body might just be your greatest hope. About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. You know, fortunately, this was my first job out of college, so I was able to uh, come back home and work in my hometown. I wore two hats. I was sports director and I was a news anchor. Uh, I did that for a few years and then decided to go full-time into news. Well, I love our team here at ABC7. We have a great mix, and it really is a great mix of, of personalities, of experience, that meshes really well into a really strong team. I'm Scott Dennis, and I'm here for you. Serving part-time as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. 
Gain practical experience with technology and equipment to get an edge in the civilian world. Learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you at NationalGuard.com. Take a look at this, a gator with a sweet ride. Hillsborough County Sheriff's officers found, Sheriff's deputies rather, found this gator at a CVS in Brandon. Apparently he was running errands because he was also seen at a Speedway gas station before he was caught. Deputies caught him and gave him a ride home, wherever that may have been. <laughs> nice pond somewhere, yeah, right? Yeah, there you go. And we saw one here uh, in Sarasota. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they've been everywhere, in pools. Public parking lot. Right. Yeah, they're all over Undercar the place yeah. these days. That's right. Yep. Uh, I saw a fox today uh, just uh, in the neighborhood uh, during the daylight, so I was kind of concerned. It looked kind of uh, thin and uh, looked like his right leg was hurt, but uh, that was up in uh, northwest Braden and, and, uh, during the afternoon, which is a little unusual. Yeah. So I stayed back as far as again, sometimes those are rabbit, obviously. Right. Uh, but uh, we're seeing thunderstorms up there now in northwest Bradenton. Those will be coming to an end here in the next, uh, looks like a half hour or so. And then things should start to calm down. Not as many storms tomorrow, and we'll have a shift, I think, mainly inland storms for the rest of the week. Okay. Uh, weekend, different story. Okay, thanks, Bob. World News Tonight with David Muir is coming up. We'll see you again at 7 and 11. Have a good night.